These days, there are increasingly more reasons for utilizing temporary or field antennas. Camping and hiking are the obvious, and then there are field-organized trips, hilltopping for DX, and of course, we all think we could be vital in some form of emergency communication. Yeah, very good, Ed. You're about five by eight here. Or you could just go out in the backyard and have fun. And um, I have a portable station with a uh, automatic antenna tuner uh, uh, tuned inverted V up in a tree. Over. This form of HF operation was far more difficult before the popularity of the automatic antenna tuner, especially the BAT, the battery-operated auto tuner. Usually, the field station is limited to 100 watts, or much less, so it is important to have the most efficient antenna possible. Getting all the power available to the antenna is only possible if the feed line has the same impedance on both ends. It would also be nice if you could work more than one band without putting up another antenna. To avoid extremes and in input impedance, your antenna should not be resonant on any ham band. 56 or 74 feet is a convenient length for a field dipole. If you hang up some wire fed with coax and try to tune it with a tuner at the radio, you will have poor results. Your tuner must be at the feed point of the antenna. Technically, it must be an antenna coupler, not a feed line transformer. With the BAT, you can put the tuner right where it belongs, even 30 or more feet in the air. The best tuner for this purpose is the LDG Z11 Pro 2, which will handle 100 watts, and with its latching relays and AA battery power, it will tune antennas for many months or even a year or more. I will be using the one that has the internal batteries. However, you can just attach them on the outside with a rubber band. This field kit is capable of setting up a variety of antennas to suit your situation and environment. Here is a list of what it contains. A slingshot with 2 and 4 ounce weights. A weighted spool of 50 pound monofilament fishing line. 28 foot pre-cut wires with plugs. Dipole connectors. Coax. Light rope. Jumpers and connectors. Magnets, bungee cords, a table clamp with a crappie pole and wire. And last but not least, the LDG Z11 Pro 2 and the MFJ 16010L network tuner. If you know where and what you're going to do with your field setup, you only have to take the necessary stuff. The least demanding is the 16-foot crappie pole clamped to a picnic table. The wire is loosely wrapped around the pole to hold it in place. A pre-cut wire is run along the ground for a counterpoise in the direction you want to favor. Connect two wires directly to the tuner with banana plugs and of course the tuner to the rig with coax. Since the feed point of the antenna is on the table, you can use either the LDG or the MFJ tuner. With the MFJ, tune for maximum band noise, then touch up and transmit while observing the SWR. With the LDG, just feed it some RF and it'll do the rest. If you have a tree or similar structure, the same setup can be used by substituting one pre-cut wire hauled up into the tree to replace the pole and table clamp. With the feed point so close to the ground, this is a compromised antenna and would be most effective with good propagation and CW. The easiest way to gain elevation for your field antenna is with a slingshot, fishing weight, and monofilament line. About six ounces of weight has been added to the spool to hold it on the ground when the shot is made. The two ounce weights work best and will give you the best height, and the four ounce weights are necessary for trees with dense foliage. It is a good idea to have extra weights and a pocket knife since not all attempts are successful. If your first attempt doesn't put the line where you want, just cut off the weight and wind the line back on the spool and start over. If you are just pulling up the end of a wire, you can use the fishing line. 
However, if you're hauling up the LDG tuner, pull the light rope up first. The most effective is the inverted V with the tuner and feed point as high as possible. Shoot your weight over a tree limb or tall structure. Pull up a length of light rope. Attach the tuner, coax, and pre-cut wires. Turn on the tuner, haul it up, and secure the ends of the V with fishing line to any convenient structure or stakes in the ground. To tune on any band, just send up some RF. The tuner will do the rest. This antenna with the feed point about 35 feet in the air will be as good as any home station V or dipole. This approach can be adapted for the businessman or vacationer with a hotel room, even the apartment dweller. If you are on a higher floor, drop one of your pre-cut wires over the balcony or out the window. Put the other around the interior of the room. Connect the two to the LDG or MFJ and load them up. This last antenna is a bit unusual and more for the experimenter. It is shunt feeding any large grounded structure. The idea is to get current to flow in the structure making it a vertical antenna. It could be a fire tower, a lamp pole, or even a tall building or billboard. The shunt is made up of the loop created by the two connections and the included section of the structure. Here you can use the LDG or MFJ tuner, which will match the impedance, making current flow in the structure. The effectiveness of this antenna depends on the structure and the frequency, and could be anywhere from a great antenna to a very large dummy. I have tried this using lamp poles and even a Ford Explorer with varying success. The best was a highway sign on 40 meters. It will get your creative ham juices flowing if nothing else. Hopefully this video has given you the tools to be able to make HF antennas work under any condition. Once you understand these underlying ideas, you will be able to create your own antenna no matter what the situation. You can use the HF bands anywhere now, so get out there and have fun.